Okay, here's the project for today. We're getting new countertops in one week. Uh, these are granite, but we want quartz. These are a little dark, and we're not real a big fan of the design and stuff. So what do I need to do? I need to take off the backsplash all the way around the room. Sorry if I'm making you guys sick. I'll slow down a little. There we go. I already took off the plug and receptacle covers. And we're going to need to clear off these counters next. But what am I going to use? Well, got some hammers, got some pry bars, and I've got these chippers. This one's offset, which is really nice. And then this little small one. And my SDS hammer drill. And I'll have links to all these things in the description if you're interested in picking them up for yourselves. So let's get these counters cleared off and start ripping off these backsplashes. Got the counters all cleared off and what I'm going to do is use some painters plastic and some blue tape and just protect these countertops. I know they're coming off but I'll be able to take all the debris and just roll it up into the plastic and throw it away and that'll make up clean up a little easier. I don't know how dusty this is going to be but we'll see once we get started and if I need to I'll put a sheet of plastic up over here to protect the rest of the family room. All right, so I decided to go right for the power. I've got this SDS hammer with this angled spade bit so you don't jam your knuckles in here. I have no idea how this stuff is attached. I wasn't here when it was installed, but I think I'm gonna get it. Oh, what? Oh, guess she wants it. So I ended up going with the pry bar and the hammer. That seemed to be the quickest way. This took me less than an hour to do. It was on there pretty good, except for that one piece right there. Looks like they used silicone. And the drywall is not in bad a condition. I think just a little skim coat and you know, one of those Home Depot patches right there. And I think we'll be good to go. Actually, no, uh, I'm gonna clean up all this tile here and then we're going to reset and then I'm going to cut all the drywall out so that I can replace it. The only thing I want to try to do is leave a small lip up underneath here so I have something to tape to. I'm not so much worried about along the countertop because we're going to put a four inch backsplash there. Okay, I'm going to get this cleaned up. Okay, got everything cleaned up and we got to put everything back together because we got to use this kitchen for the next day or so until I can get to the drywall. So, it's late. We're gonna start this on another day. So I've started taking out the drywall and as you can see, I'm leaving a little flange right there and another one up underneath there. So I have something for my paper to stick to and there's a lot of wood in here. Uh, make sure when you're attacking this thing with uh, tools like a reciprocating saw or like I'm using this oscillating tool right there uh, that you don't cut any wires. Fortunately, my builder followed code and he covered all the wires when they come through the walls and then any of the other wires that are coming into these boxes are way back in the back. So, all right. So I still got to go all the way across here and then around that way. Uh, we're cleaning up as we're going. We got a vacuum cleaner. Look at that. Not Ryobi. And we're going to keep going.
Well, there's all the drywall out. Nice slow pan for you guys all the way around the kitchen. So before I put the drywall in, I have to take all these out. These are box extenders because we had tile. So it's just a matter of taking these two screws out, flipping the plug out, and pushing that back in. And if you're not comfortable doing electricity, get a licensed electrician. But actually, I have a video where I replace these two switches right here. And I'll put a link to it right up here somewhere, right up there. Okay, folks, all the drywall's done. It is not the prettiest in the world. Uh, if you want to see pretty drywall, I would recommend you follow the Vancouver Carpenter. I will put a link to his page in the description of this video. So now what I need to do is get some mud and tape on these joints so it can dry overnight. Let's do that. So today is countertop day and I have sanded all of the mud to the best of my ability. There was some wet spots still. I got a wet spot there and a wet spot there. Um, I'm going to have to wait until the countertops are installed to finish the drywall, which is no big deal because we're going to have a backsplash that's going to come up four inches. So I'll be able to get in there and take care of the rest of this with my second coat sand and texture. So, just waiting on the countertop, guys. Okay, so it's been a few days. As you can see, the new counters are in. Had to put the sink back together because she wanted water for some silly reason. Second coat of mud is on the drywall now. Looks really good. Got a little wet spot right there. Uh, we're gonna try to get a fan on that today so I can sand this afternoon and maybe we can texture tomorrow. It's looking pretty good. So it has been a few days, actually probably about a week. And I've got the kitchen all masked out because we're spraying texture today. But first, I actually have to use some of this DAP kitchen and bath caulk to do, if I can show you, kind of right along this edge on the top of the backsplash. I had the countertop people leave that undone because I wasn't ready for them. Let's see if I can get a shot in there for you. Yeah, see it right there. Wasn't ready with the drywall. So I'm going to run that caulk line down there. And then we'll get ready for the big party. So I mixed up some of the topping which is the same stuff I use for all the joints, into a nice milkshake-y consistency. Uh, I use the honey knife, but if you have one of those paddle bits, that mixes up even better. The key here is you want to get as many of the clumps out of there. And I'm going to be laying this down with this Wagner Powertex. This thing is awesome. You just pour it right in the hopper, and then you spray it out. And they have three kinds of tips. Uh, the black one is the small, the yellow is the medium and then the white is the big one so it kind of depends on what kind of texture you want if you want a rough texture or like an orange peel with what i'm going so i'm going with the small one so always test the consistency the thicker this is the bigger the chunks are um, i've done this enough times that i know that i want to make milkshake and we'll use this right here this is the thing there'll be a link in the description for this bad boy if you do more than the occasional texture job where you can get away with using like the home ex spray can you want to pick one of these up it's an awesome deal so 
So this is one of those projects where the prep and the cleanup takes way more time than the actual work. I think I sprayed for maybe 10 minutes. Uh, I had to adjust my mix a little bit. Uh, I'm a little wet right through here. And then for some reason I got very chunky over in here. And I don't know what that was. But started out really good. It was really nice over here and then it just kind of adjusted. So probably mixing my mix a little better probably would have helped. Um, I tried to add a little water and that was too wet. So I added a little mud back and we did that. And not bad. I gotta let this dry. And then any place where there's like a real big chunk that looks ugly, I can just knock that down, sand it down, whatever. But this is gonna have to dry for a couple hours. And then we'll proceed from there. So everything is dry and knocked down and it looks fabulous and it is time to paint. And I'm going to save you the pain of watching me paint. The next thing you will see is these walls done completely. All right, see you in a few seconds. Okay, so you guys were probably thinking when we switch to the next scene, this thing would be all painted. Well, guess what? Customer wasn't happy had me sand it all down. She said the texture didn't match. And I don't know what's wrong with this lady. She says she's not gonna pay me for I'm this. I'm not paying you, you're my husband. Ah, oh, duh. All right, so sand it down and I'm gonna use Homax this time. And I heard a neat little hint online that if you put it in some warm water, it actually sprays better. So hopefully it'll be less clumpy. We'll try that. So I'm gonna let that dry. I actually used a whole can to do this whole room all the way around. So like I said, I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna use the second can to get all the places where it looks a little thin or needs a little touch up. Well, this project is finally over. Six work days, nights and weekends spread over four weeks. A little bit longer than I thought it was going to take, but she's happy, I'm happy, and we now have this beautiful kitchen with a brand new backsplash and these awesome quartz countertops. If this project encouraged you to try something like this on your own, I'd love to hear about that down in the comments. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit that bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. The subscribe button's right down here. Thanks for watching. Dad it yourself.